Good day Grade 11s, welcome to your next lesson in trigonometry. In this we're going to be just looking at applying the trig identities that we have learned so far. So let's get started with our first example. It says simplify 1 over cos squared times by 1 minus sine squared x. 1 minus sine squared x. So we want to simplify this. But now the trig identities that we've learned are, sorry just let me get my pen out. We have that sine theta over cos theta equals tan theta, but we also have that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. So do you agree that if I took this and I manipulated it, I would get this? So if I went, well, cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So that is the same form as that. So therefore I can replace this by 1 over cos squared x times by 1 minus sine squared x is the same as cos squared x, cos squared x over 1. And then we can just cancel and we end up with 1. How nice and easy is that? Right, let's do another example. Now they've asked us to simplify 1 over sine b minus cos b over tan b. Okay, so I'm guessing that I'm going to have to use sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. Okay, so let's take it slowly. We've got 1 over sine b minus, this is cos b, and I'm going to separate this out over 1, divided by 1 over tan b. But what do we do when we divide by a fraction? We tip and times, so the first of all this is 1 over sine b minus cos b times by tan b. But what is tan b? Tan b can be replaced with sine b over cos b. So it becomes 1 over sine b minus cos b times by sine b divided by cos b. So those cancel. Isn't that wonderful? So now we've got 1 over sine b minus sine b. And now I'm going to do a common denominator of sine b because there's an implied one year. So my common denominator is sine b. So do you agree this becomes sine b divides into sine b once, 1 times 1 is 1, minus sine, 1 goes into sine b once, 1 times sine b is sine squared b. Okay, but what do we know? We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Therefore, we can say that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So do you see that I can replace this numerator with a cos squared? So that becomes cos squared b over sine b. And that is as far as we can go with this. And that's it, grade 11s. So let's have another look at, look at another example. Right, they've asked us to simplify tan squared alpha times cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha over tan squared alpha. Again, just to help me, I'm going to write my identities that I know on the right hand side. So I've got that sine theta over cos theta equals tan theta. And I also have that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Right, so let's start with the left hand side. Well, there is only one side, but let's start over here. So we've got sine squared alpha cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha over tan squared alpha. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this tan squared alpha into a sine over cos. So it becomes sine squared alpha over cos squared alpha. It makes sense that if tan is squared, then each of the sine squared and cos squareds are going to be, coses are going to be squared, times by cos squared alpha, remember there's an implied one here, plus, and now I'm going to separate these out like I did with the last example, so it becomes sine squared alpha divided by tan squared alpha. Do you agree that these cancel? How beautiful is that? So we're just left with sine squared alpha 
plus, and in this case we've got sine squared alpha times by 1 over tan squared alpha, okay, which we knew anyway. So then this becomes sine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha times by, now tan is sine over cos, so 1 over tan is going to be cos squared alpha over sine squared alpha and these cancel so you end up therefore with sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha which is equal to 1. How nice and pretty is that? Right, let's do another type of example. In this case they're asking us to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now grade 11, let me explain something very carefully to you straight away. We have to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So we cannot assume anything or use that these are equal to each other to prove it. Okay, so traditionally we start with either the left hand side or the right hand side. Um, I'm going to start with the right hand side. So I'm going to start at the right hand side and I'm going to say okay fine this is equal to cos alpha over 1 plus sine alpha and I want it to look something like that and you see that there's a 1 minus sine alpha at the top there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to times both the numerator and the denominator by 1 minus sine alpha so let's do that so I'm going to times this by 1 minus sine alpha and I'm going to times the numerator by 1 minus sine alpha right so what do we end up with in the numerator we've got cos alpha bracket 1 minus sine alpha all over this bit here which is 1 plus sine alpha 1 minus alpha but I'm hoping that you realize that this is actually the difference of two squares because we've got two numbers that are same here 1 sine alpha and sine alpha and we've got a plus and minus this becomes 1 minus sine squared alpha. Now if we write our identities that we know up here we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 therefore we know that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta therefore this 1 minus sine squared alpha has to equal cos squared alpha so this becomes cos alpha 1 minus sine alpha over cos squared alpha and that means I can cancel this cos with the square and we're left with 1 minus sine alpha over cos alpha which yay is equal to the left hand side. Now grade 11's I know that from experience the students say hi I wouldn't have known how to do that. Grade 11's that's why we show you this. It's a trick. It is a little tip and a hint but once you see one like this you can start thinking in those type of lines where we look at this and we say how do we think we're going to get to that? What do we need to do? And then when we do it we realize that isn't that nice that's the, perf the difference of two squares cancels out becomes an identity and life is good. Right now why do you think I have got this big bright thing at the bottom here that says remember restrictions and the remember restrictions re refers to the denominator because remember as soon as you have fractions your denominator cannot equal zero therefore this is true if cos of alpha does not equal zero or if 1 plus sine alpha does not equal 0. So when does cos alpha equal 0? If we remember from our little cos graph, we know that the first place that cos is equal to 0 is at 90 degrees. So therefore alpha cannot equal 90 degrees and then what is the period of a cos graph? It is 360 degrees so therefore it cannot equal that plus or minus 360 degrees and we put a k in front of it to cover. 
or we know that 1 plus sine alpha cannot equal 0 therefore sine alpha cannot equal minus 1 and if we think about our sine graph we know that it starts at 0 goes up comes down and goes over there so the first time it is at minus 1 is at 270 degrees therefore we say sine alpha cannot equal 270 degrees or any repeat of that in it so 360 degrees so that is your restriction this is all true as long as your cos alpha does not equal zero or your one plus sine alpha does not equal zero okay let us look at another example now it says prove that one plus cos one over cos alpha minus cos a, I'm oh, sorry, 1 over cos a minus cos a tan squared a over 1 is equal to cos a. Now grade 11s, it is obvious that there is nothing I can do with the right hand side. So we're going to start on the left hand side. Now we're going to start on the left hand side. Okay, and we're starting with 1 over cos a minus cos a tan squared a over 1 and we want it to equal cos a. So the first thing we're going to do is try and get it into one fraction. So we're going to start with a common denominator of cos a, right? So cos a divided into cos a is 1, so that's just 1, minus 1 goes into cos a, cos a times, we multiply this out, so we get cos a times by cos a times by tan squared a. So if we simplify this further, we've got 1 minus cos a times cos a is cos squared a. But now tan squared a, what do we know? We know that tan of theta is sine theta over cos theta. So I can replace this tan squared a with sine squared a over cos squared a. And that's still all over cos a. So then what can we do? We can go 1 minus the cos squared a cancels with the cos squared a. And what are we left with? Sine squared a all over cos a. And by now grade 11s you should start seeing the solution because we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Therefore cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So therefore we can say that this is cos squared a all over cos a and then we can cancel that and that and we're just left with cos a. And again grade 11s what are we talking about with restrictions? We're saying that this works as long as the denominator of my fraction does not equal 0. Therefore, we can say that cos of a does not equal 0. Remember that means from the last graph, but let me just go through it again. If we look at our cos graph, it starts up here, comes down and up again. The first time it's at 0 is at 90 degrees. So we know that a cannot equal 90 degrees or any full revolution after that. So it cannot equal k 360 degrees. Right. Last example, cos, prove that cos beta over sine beta plus tan beta times by cos beta is equal to 1 over sine beta. And again, nothing we could do there, nothing to do on that side. So we gain to mess with the left hand side. So let's play with the left hand side. And what do we have? We've got cos beta over sine beta. And grade 11s, I'm immediately going to change this tan beta to what? We know that tan of beta in this case is equal to sine of beta over cos of beta. So that becomes sine beta over cos beta all times by cos beta. So let's multiply this bracket in and see what we get. So do you agree that becomes cos beta times by cos beta over sine beta is becoming cos squared beta over sine beta plus nicely for us these cancel and you're just left with sine beta over 1. So then if we have to find a common denominator, we can find a common denominator of sine beta. 
So sine beta goes into sine beta once, 1 times cos squared beta is just cos squared beta, plus 1 goes into sine beta gives times your sine beta, sine beta sum sine beta is sine beta squared, and we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Therefore, cos squared beta plus sine squared beta equals 1. So it's 1 over sine beta, which equals the right hand side. Yay! And now, what are our restrictions? Our restrictions are that the denominator cannot equal 0. And you'll see that the only denominator we're talking about now is sine beta. So sine beta cannot equal 0 because we can't divide by a 0 because that's undefined. And just to remind you, your sine graph looks like this, okay, where sine is 0 at 0 degrees. Therefore, your beta cannot equal 0 plus or minus k360. And why am I going plus or minus k360? Because obviously, at every 360 degrees, we're repeating ourselves. And that's it grade 11s. You need to go practice these, make sure you can do them, and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.